your cholesterol numbers might be perfect and your brain could still be in trouble. Here's what every female APOE4 carrier needs to know. Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Tran, founder of the Phoenix Community. And in today's video, we're unpacking one of the most eye-opening talks from the Alzheimer's Association International Conference on APOE and Lipid Biology that happened in March 2025. It's extremely fresh science and you need to hear about it. This session focused on a critical but often overlooked question, why do female APOE4 carriers face a higher risk of Alzheimer's and what's happening inside their brain cells long before symptoms appear? We'll dive into the latest findings on cholesterol trafficking in the brain, why standard blood tests miss early warning signs, and what this means for your prevention strategy if you're a woman with APOE4. Let's get into it. Here's something that rarely gets talked about, even in the longevity world. You could have perfect blood cholesterol levels and still have a cholesterol problem inside your brain. That's especially true if you're a woman with APOE4. See, blood tests are just a proxy. They tell you what's happening in your bloodstream not what's happening inside your neurons. And in Alzheimer's, where cholesterol builds up is often more important than how much you have. Dr. Sharita Deleu's research reveals a powerful pattern. When you are a female employee for carriers, especially in midlife, you tend to struggle with cholesterol trafficking inside your brain cells. It's not about your total cholesterol. It's about misplaced cholesterol and the cellular damage that misplacement causes as we age. We asked, how is cholesterol regulated in the endolysosomal system of the brain? And how is this changing throughout aging? And especially what are the effects earlier on in life? To study this, the researchers team used humanized mouse models. So those are mice engineered to carry human APOE genes so we can model real world Alzheimer's risk at the cellular level. She focused on the brain's endolysosomal system, which are a series of compartments that sort of sort recycle and break down cellular cargo. Think of it like a high-tech warehouse. Early endosomes are the sorting hubs of that high-tech warehouse. Lysosomes are the trash compactors, and the goal is to keep cholesterol flowing through the right pipes at the right time. But in female APOE4 carriers, that flow starts to jam early, which is around midlife. At middle age, we start to see differences in APOE-specific increase in early endosomes. These early endosomes are supposed to reroute cholesterol where it's needed or recycle it when it's not needed at all. But in female E4 brain, they get clogged. Cholesterol piles up and it's like the conveyor belt slows down and then the packages stop moving. And here's what makes it even trickier. This dysfunction is completely invisible on a blood test. You could get a clean bill of health at your checkup and still be accumulating toxic cholesterol inside your neurons. Later in life, this dysfunction moves even deeper into the cell. So here we see this cholesterol accumulation that we expect. However, the lysosomal cholesterol is decreased in the APOE4 female specifically. So you could think of the lysosomes as cellular landfills. They're supposed to dissolve excess cholesterol and dispose of the waste safely. But here, cholesterol is missing from the lysosomes. That means the garbage isn't getting where it needs to go. So where is all this cholesterol ending up? The increase in total cholesterol may be located in other organelles, such as the plasma membrane or mitochondria. So that's like shoving your trash into you know, your air vents or your car gas tank. It doesn't just sit there it breaks things. So the plasma membrane becomes very rigid and dysfunctional when the cholesterol is there. The mitochondria, your cells and energy factories start to falter. And the byproduct of this misplaced cholesterol fuels inflammation and oxidative stress. So if you're a woman with APOE4, this study is quite 
an alarm bell because this isn't just about your heart health, it's about your brain cells health decades before diagnosis. And here's the kicker. You might feel fine, your blood work might be great, but deep in your neuron, cholesterol is getting stuck and your brain's cleanup system is failing behind. Just a quick word about that. That's why inside the Phoenix community, we never take a one-size-fits-all approach. We tailor protocols by age, sex, genotype, and life stage, because the right strategy for, let's say, a 48-year-old woman is extremely different compared to a 60-year-old man. And these insights aren't just academic. They give you real levers to pull through diet, movement, hormones, and smart tracking. Because once you understand where the dysfunction starts, then you can actually reverse it. Okay, by now you are probably wondering, well, why is cholesterol trafficking dysfunction worse in female A4E4 carriers? Why don't the men get the same problem? And then two, well, what can I do about it if I'm a female A4E4 carrier? So why is it worse in female compared to male? Number one is hormones, and number two is cellular vulnerability. So estrogen's role in the brain cholesterol management is extremely important. It helps regulate lipid metabolism, synaptic plasticity, and mitochondrial function. It supports normal cholesterol recycling and clearance in the brain, partly by modulating APOE expression and activity. But as women enter perimenopause and menopause, estrogen drops sharply, which decreases APOE lipidation capacity, which means less effective cholesterol shuttling, and weakens lysosomal function. It also increases oxidative stress and inflammation, especially in for carriers who already have baseline vulnerabilities. Second is about sex-specific brain aging pathways. Female brains naturally show different patterns of aging related to microglial activation, immune signaling, and mitochondrial resilience. APOE4 interacts with these sex-specific patterns in ways that exacerbate endosomal and lysosomal dysfunction as seen in Dr. Deleu's mouse model. And now the most important part of this video, what can you do about it? Well, what matters most here is you can't fix what you don't measure or what you misunderstand. So you have to build a plan around three pillars. Number one is to support cholesterol processing inside the brain. So estrogen, HRT, if it's appropriate, timing is really key for hormone replacement, and it seems to be within five years of menopause onset. Studies suggest transdermal estradiol may preserve brain metabolism and reduce APOE4-related risk, especially when paired with progesterone. So consult a menopause literate doctor before starting, especially one familiar with APOE4 risk. Second is to enhance lysosomal function, so nutrients like resveratrol, curcumin, and quercetin may improve autophagy, and lysosomal cholesterol clearance. Exercise and intermittent fasting also stimulate autophagy, helping clear cellular debris and stock lipid. Omega-3 DHA, especially the phospholipid form, is crucial for rebuilding neuronal membranes damaged by misplaced cholesterol. So look for forms like DHA phosphatidylcholine or DHA lysophosphatidylcholine, so LPC DHA, that crosses the blood-brain barrier more efficiently. The second thing you need to do is to track the right markers beyond blood cholesterol. While standard LDL and HDL panel won't catch brain cholesterol problems, you can monitor oxidized LDL, which is a proxy for lipid-related inflammation. You can track ApoB, LDLP, which is particle number matters HSCRP for systemic inflammation that often rises with lysosomal dysfunction. And you can track JFAP and NFL, which are emerging blood-based biomarkers of brain aging and glial damage. The third thing you can do is to tailor your diet and do a lot of movements. So avoid high saturated fat, especially if your LDL is high, um, because as you know, E4s transport fat poorly. So emphasize on monounsaturated fat like olive oil, avocados, omega-3s over keto-style diets. Movement matters a lot. Aerobic exercise and resistant training boost lysosomal health and reduce neuroinflammation. And of course, 
sleep, light exposure, and stress regulation, all of that influence the endolysosomal system. As you know, all of these interventions are actually what you should do as an apoe for anyway. And I like to call those like no regrets move, right? It's no regret to actually sleep well, exercise, reduce saturated fat. So you have no excuse to not do those. All right, if this resonated with you, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my next video. I am unpacking several conferences about Alzheimer's, APOE4s, dementia, and cognitive health in the next few weeks and months because there are hours and hours of videos. And if you don't want to miss any of those, click subscribe and join me in the next video. Also, if you'd like to join us at the Phoenix community, well, the link to apply is in the description below the video. I read every application personally. If you are coming from YouTube, just mention it in the application form and I'll make sure you get some extra love. Let's beat these odds together. See you next time.